Well, hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Dre. I'm a board certified dermatologist. And in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing for you all the new hair restore line from Neutrogena. We've got a shampoo, a conditioner, a scalp detox, a scalp serum, and a dietary supplement. Neutrogena was kind enough to gift me these products. As you guys know, I do work with them from time to time on sponsored content, but this video is not sponsored. We're gonna be talking about the ingredients in these products, what they can offer as far as scalp health and healthy hair growth. And of course, I'm going to be giving you my opinion on the performance of some of these products that I tried out, what I really think of them. I will not hold back. But before we move on, let's touch on something really important. Why does scalp skin health matter? Well, you have quite a bit of skin on your scalp. It is the area where you have the most sebaceous oil glands. Just like the skin on the rest of your face, it benefits from regular cleansing, mild exfoliation as needed, and in ingredients and practices that support better moisture retention and barrier integrity. When sebum, dead skin cells, and product residue builds up on the scalp, it can create a very inflammatory, irritating environment that drives scalp itch, scalp inflammation, and doesn't exactly create a favorable environment for healthy hair growth. Furthermore, excessive oil on the scalp, it creates a favorable environment for overgrowth of malassezia yeast, leading to flare-ups of dandruff and scalp itch. That excessive oil can oxidize quite easily, creating more inflammation that compromises follicle health and doesn't do your hair any favors. Regular scalp cleansing and mild exfoliation help to remove this buildup and mildly exfoliate, as well as improve circulation, allowing for good blood flow to the follicle to nourish it, to provide the hair follicle what it needs to grow healthy hair. To be clear, these products are not meant to treat any particular hair loss disorder. And as a reminder, there are many times of hair loss out there, knowing the type of hair loss you have, that is half the battle to figuring out how to get your hair health back on track. But these products do contain ingredients that can support scalp health for fuller, healthier looking hair. First of all, let's start with the shampoo. It contains mandelic acid, hydrolyzed collagen, niacinamide, and panthenol. Mandelic acid is a gentle alpha hydroxy acid. It helps improve water content in the scalp and it also mildly exfoliates. In contrast to other alpha hydroxy acids, it's very, very gentle, so less likely to cause scalp irritation, while effectively helping to remove oily dead skin cell buildup. Hydrolyzed collagen, it's not meant to get into your skin and replace lost collagen, but it is very hydrating, helping to improve moisture content in the scalp. Ultimately, that creates a more favorable set of conditions for better skin barrier integrity and reducing scalp irritation. Panthenol are pro vitamin B5 helps to attract and retain moisture. Essentially, this family of ingredients is excellent in a shampoo for helping to maintain both a clean and hydrated scalp. But again, they don't directly address any particular underlying hair loss disorder. If you have excessive hair shedding, for example, telogen effluvium, remember that is coming from inside the house, usually related to some sort of internal stressor or hormonal change, life event. Shampoo is not going to correct that. And these ingredients don't have any impact on hormonal effects at the level of the hair follicle, for example, in androgenetic alopecia. So I tried this shampoo out and in my personal experience, it worked well to cleanse my scalp, but I did find it a little bit on the drying side for my strands, even when using the corresponding conditioner. Also, this product along with the conditioner and the uh, scalp detox all have fragrance. Now you guys know I enjoy a scented shampoo with a nice fruity floral scent. I really enjoy them. However, the fragrance they use in these products, I find very off-putting. It makes me not want to use these. The conditioner has glycerin, hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid, hydrolyzed collagen, and panthenol. I found the conditioner to be very lightweight, but let's talk specifically about the scalp detox cleanser. This contains mandelic acid, as well as lactic acid and salicylic acid, along with hyaluronic acid. Mandelic acid and lactic acid are alpha hydroxy acids that help to improve moisture retention in the scalp and also help to very gently exfoliate the scalp. Hyaluronic acid is a humectant and helps with better scalp moisture retention. Ultimately, this is very good for scalp's moisture barrier and barrier integrity, reducing irritation likely. Salicylic acid is the one that can finesse the oily surfaces. It is the most logical scalp exfoliant. For those of you 
you out there who deal with flare-ups of seborrheic dermatitis, dandruff on the scalp, using this product a couple of times a week, I think you're really gonna like. It has an interesting applicator that allows you to dispense the product to the scalp. I really like that. And to massage it in. You get a little bit of mechanical exfoliation with that and you also help to stimulate circulation in the scalp as well. This allows for better blood flow to the hair follicle. While I really like this product a lot as a scalp directed exfoliant to use a couple of times a week, especially for people with dandruff, again, it has that strong fragrance that I don't care for. The scalp serum features caffeine as well as a micropeptide called acetyl dipeptide 31 amide and centella asiatica extract. Let's start with caffeine. What in the latte is that all about? Well, caffeine is an antioxidant, so it may help reduce inflammation, but there's actually some evidence that caffeine can localize to the hair follicle and support hair growth. In addition to its role as an antioxidant, there's some evidence to suggest it may even counteract that potent androgen hormone dihydrotestosterone, which is known to jeopardize hair growth in the condition androgenetic alopecia. Some research also suggests that it may help to support the hair follicle in getting into the antigen growing phase to grow hair. And it also may help to improve that blood flow aspect to the hair follicle. Clinical studies, albeit with limitations and small in power, do show that the use of a caffeine containing shampoo at the very least shows promise for hair growth. Some studies even suggest caffeine may be beneficial for reducing hair shedding and androgenetic alopecia. Let's talk about the acetyl dipeptide 31 amide. This is a micropeptide, which if you watch my video on Neutrogena's new collagen bank facial moisturizer and vitamin C serum, we talked about this new peptide there. It's been in the making for many, many years. It's a tiny little peptide with excellent penetration into the skin. Laboratory studies suggest that this micropeptide can help calm down inflammation and also may help to improve production of extracellular matrix components. Clinically, this micropeptide has been shown to improve the visible signs of facial aging, namely the formation of wrinkles and laxity. While the in vitro cells in a dish type studies mechanistically suggest that perhaps this ingredient could be beneficial for scalp health, I have yet to come across any studies looking at this micropeptide specifically for use on the scalp or for hair growth. So while it might support scalp health and a reduction potentially in scalp inflammation, we don't have any solid evidence that it's going to be beneficial for hair growth. Then there is Centella Asiatica, also known as Go-To Cola. This is known for having wound healing properties and its ability to stimulate collagen production. Those are things that do end up being really beneficial for healthy hair growth. But whether or not it supports healthy hair growth, we really don't have good clinical studies in that regard. It may be a benefit as well in calming down inflammation in the scalp. Now, I've used several similar scalp serums over the years that I've tested out on this channel that contain caffeine as the signature ingredient, aiming to support healthier hair growth. One of the things that I have found about this product is that it is a richer texture. It is thicker. It's very hydrating and moisturizing. I think if you have a dry scalp, you will find you may actually enjoy this product as a scalp moisturizer, if anything. That being said, because it is rather on the thick side, if you have fine hair and you use a couple of drops too many of this particular serum, well, it can make the hair close to the scalp way down a little bit and look a little flat and dull. But if you're conservative with the amount that you use, you massage it in carefully, it ends up working out really well. And like I said, it's nice and moisturizing for the scalp. With consistent use, it may help in improving scalp comfort and potentially reducing scalp inflammation, though more research is needed to definitively say if the ingredients in this are going to make a huge difference for your scalp or hair health. Last but not least, let's talk about the collagen peptide drink supplement. So you get 20 sticks in the box and each one contains two and a half grams of bovine collagen peptides plus vitamin C. Now collagen peptide supplementation has become really popular over the past several years and I have many, many videos on my channel all about collagen peptides. Do they work? What's the deal with them? What are some common myths around them? And this particular dose,
dose of bovine collagen uh, peptides has actually been examined in a clinical study looking at its effects on hair. A double-blind placebo-controlled study looked at 44 women aged 39 to 75, each taking two and a half grams of bovine collagen peptides daily, or placebo, for 16 weeks. Now, at the end of the study, the participants in the collagen group, they had a statistically significant increase in hair thickness by about 1.93 micrometers, while the placebo group actually showed a slight decrease in hair thickness. In cell studies, collagen peptides increased follicle cell proliferation by about 31% compared to untreated cells. So there is some evidence that bovine collagen peptide supplementation at this dose may support hair thickness and follicle cell activity. But that being said, we have to be cautious. This is just one small study. And while the findings are interesting, they don't really prove that collagen peptide supplementation supports hair growth or will correct any underlying hair growth issues. While collagen peptide supplements are, for the most part, generally well tolerated, some people can have some adverse effects related to them. Of course, if you're allergic to the peptide, that can lead to serious allergic reactions like anaphylaxis. That's more often the case in collagen supplements that use fish-derived collagen, but nonetheless, also a lot of people might experience some digestive upset like bloating, gastrointestinal reflux disorder, nausea. So I did not actually try them out myself, so I cannot comment on how they taste. And of course, vitamin C we know is vital for healthy collagen synthesis. Like if you're vitamin C deficient, if you have scurvy, collagen is not being made properly and that can lead to many serious consequences, which I go over in my uh, skin warning signs of scurvy. But it's not clear that just taking vitamin C supplementation in the absence of having scurvy is gonna make any sort of difference for your hair or your skin. Vitamin C mostly ends up from supplements in your urine in the toilet. So it could just be expensive pee at that point with minimal to no impact on the hair or skin. So overall, here's my take on this line. It focuses primarily on improving scalp health through exfoliation, hydration, and improved circulation. The formulas are well thought out. They have logical ingredients, especially the scalp detox cleanser, a great option for people who have frequent flare-ups of seborrheic dermatitis. It really targets scalp buildup and microcirculation. I found the shampoo to be a little too drying for my personal hair needs as someone with fine wavy hair, and I really did not like the fragrance. I found the conditioner a little bit too lightweight to really get in there and address the strands in a way that at least offset the drying nature of the shampoo to my liking. The scalp serum, on the other hand, is very hydrating. Like using it, you will find it helps to address a dry scalp, but it can be a little too heavy on the hair strands. And while the collagen supplement does have that one clinical study that examined that particular dose, it's still really early preliminary evidence and not a guaranteed fix. In short, this is a well-formulated line of hair care products for people with oily scalps or who deal with a lot of scalp buildup and really want products that help to cleanse, hydrate, address the barrier, improve microcirculation, and exfoliate away oily buildup and product residue. But it's not intended to be a replacement for any confirmed established hair loss treatment plan. But these hair care products may help to support scalp health. Ultimately, that's great for your overall hair growth needs. All right, guys, that's a wrap up. I hope this video was helpful for those of you who are curious about this new line because I did see some of your comments below asking me to review it. I hope this was helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.